Hey folks, welcome back to the Coswell Collectibles YouTube channel. I am Greg Brown, owner of Coswell Collectibles. Last week we had David here uh, talk to us about the things that you look out for in early G.I. Joe's 1964 salesman samples and stuff like that. So we brought him back this week because um, David is also really good and has a lot of good tips on how to take an older G.I. Joe that you find at a flea market or a garage sale or whatever and getting him refurbished back to new. So, David, take it away. Well, and I do a lot of that for Cotswold. A lot of our vintage items are items that I've cleaned and, and uh, refurbished and, and reworked to make them as good as new as we can get them, like they came off the shelf. And so today I thought I'd share a few tips. After 35 years of collecting and getting a lot of flea market and garage sale Joes, a lot of, a lot of Joes, most Joes were heavily played with, and uh, very rarely do you find them where they're not dirty and, and have marks on them and all kinds of stuff like that. So. Um, there are some simple tips that you can use to help clean them up and, and get them pretty close back to, to brand new. Um, the first thing that I'll, I'll share with you is uh, cleaning the Joe itself. You know, and whatever it's in, I always try to take the clothes off. And a lot of times I'll take my hair dryer also and take the head off to clean it because otherwise you're getting water all down into the hardware where they're strung together and that can cause rust if you get too much water down there. So a lot of times I'll take and, uh, and pop that off. Now, here's a good example of a Joe that this guy just bought at a, at a garage sale and he's really dirty. His face is just filthy and you can tell when you see it again <laughs> against one that I've already cleaned and has been refurbished. So what I do to clean the Joe's faces and you have to be, the, the painted hair Joe's are easy because their hair's all painted. Right. But with the fuzz hair Joe's you have to be very careful, never, do it in hot water because hot water will release the glue. Always use cold water to wash them. And one of the things that I use is I use just regular old soft scrub and I put a little soft scrub on a toothbrush and I'll just take that and just clean the areas where the flesh is, the ears. I try not to try to keep it away from the hair as much as possible. It won't hurt to get the soft scrub in the hair because you can rinse it out. Just be sure you rinse it really, really good. But this is this little toothbrush like this. This one is kind of contoured is good to get into the eye areas. A lot of the dirt gets into the eyes and things like that. And you can see this guy's, like I said, he's, he's pretty filthy. Um, but here's one that's been all clean and refurbished. And so once you get it scrubbed real good, rinse it out real good, dry it with a paper towel, sit aside and let it dry. Uh, the next thing you can do is retouch the eyebrows. Almost always the eyebrows on these Joes are rubbed off. Right, right. And there's, and then believe it or not, you can't just use anything now. There may be some other paints that people have used, but uh, in the past I've done a lot of these and the brand that I like the best is Liquitex. Um, Liquitex Acrylics. Now, I know there's the Apple Craft, there's the Apple Barrel or whatever they are, the hobby paints. And, right, right. But the problem you run into with some of those cheaper paints, I mean, this is like five bucks for a little tube. This will last you for probably 20 years. Where can you get those at, by the way? You can get these at Hobby Lobby hobby or Michaels. Lobby. Uh, Michaels yeah, it's okay. in, but it's in the art section, not in the hobby section. The hobby you want to find these in the art paints, not in the hobby paints. Okay, okay. The problem with the hobby paints is they are cheaper paints and they're great for crafts, but I have had in the past... Uh, some of the color leach into the plastic. Oh, okay. So that's if you, like a... that's why I use the Liquitex. I've never had problem with the Liquitex leaching into the plastic. And when I say leaching, it'll just start to bleed, and then his eye, and then he'll look like he has a big unibrow across there. So uh, try to try to use if you're going to do that, use the Liquitex paints. I've been using these for 30 years, and I've never had any problems. I have had problems with some of the craft paints. That's why I kind of stay away from those. Right, right. Um, the other thing I do is get myself a couple of really fine brushes like these. Some really fine detail brushes uh, that come to a nice point and you can just, you know, touch that eyebrow up. Most of the eyebrows are dark brown, so you can just pick you a dark brown color and mix it a little bit. Mm -hmm. If you happen to need to touch up on the eyes, you know, the eyes are blue and brown in some cases. The Liquitex makes the perfect blue and this is the brilliant blue and it matches the inside of the eye perfect if you're looking for the blue. So a good cleaning with a soft scrub and a touch up does wonders for these. Sometimes the scars need to be touched up and that's a kind of a light, kind of a light peachy color. Um, but the majority of the scars hang in there pretty well. They don't wear, but the eyebrows wear really badly on them. Well, speaking of blue, since you brought that up, a lot of people get these head sculpts that have like a blue marking into the skin. It's like a bluish green marking. Right. How have you, 
I mean, obviously you've encountered it. How do you counter that? Is there a way to counter that? Or is it just something we just kind of have to? No, there is a way to, to pull that out of there. And I've done that before. Um, so, so, so to get up, to get out those kinds of blotches, the blue blotches, right. that kind of, uh, they seep into it, the skin marker, any faces that have been had marker on there. Mm -hmm. Uh, the best way to take those off is with Oxy 10. Oxy 10. Now you can get Oxy 10 and you can put that on there and put it out in the sun and it will leach that okay. out of it. That'll okay. leach some of that blue and some of that marker out. I've also had good, uh, results with magic eraser on certain types of things. Right, right. I cleaned ahead just yesterday for one of our figures with Goo Gone. It just had some paint on the nose and the Goo Gone just got that paint right off. So you kind of have to experiment. I, I would suggest getting an old head that's pretty beat up and just try some different things. Right, right. And uh, so some of those things work really good and you can you can pull it out. The Oxy 10 works good though. Um, and sometimes you can also put the Oxy 10 in, in a, in a uh, Tupperware container and mm -hmm. close it up and that'll keep it activating. And I've done it where I've put it on uh, the inside and the outside so that it leaches it out of the plastic. Take the head off and put it in there. So Now if you're using Oxy-10 or you're using Goo Gone with like a flocked head, will that counter anything with the adhesives on the flock? Anytime or? you're using any a type of solvent or anything around the flocked head, you need to be very, very, very careful. careful. Yeah, okay. you want to keep it in, you want to keep it, try to keep it as isolated to the spot as possible. As possible. The Oxy-10 cream is nice because you can put it right over the spot. Gotcha. And uh, that'll help to do it. Whatever you do, you want to rinse the head really good. You want to avoid anything that has bleach in it. And you want to try to keep, again, the cool water because you don't want anything to release right. that. The you don't want to do a lot of excess scrubbing on those either with the fuzzy heads. Gotcha. Now the painted hairs are a little more forgiving because you can do pretty much anything with those. Um, so anyway, those are, those are some good tips for cleaning and painting the heads and kind of getting them back in shape. Every once in a while you're going into the head that's just not going to be able to be cleaned. If somebody, if a kid drew sideburns and a mustache on it with a Sharpie marker, it's probably it's not gonna, gonna be come gonna off. pretty tough. Yeah, but if it's light pen mark, light ink, uh, the bluing like you talked about, a lot of that can be taken out with a little care. Right. Um, well, one thing I was gonna throw in because I was noticing here because it looked like he had a little patch job. Um, one of the things we don't do here is we don't do flocking or repair flocking. Um, I don't know if you've you tried it before. No, I've not. I, I've, I know people who have built their own machines and can do it. it it's relatively easy yeah. I think to do and there's some uh, places online where you can see how to build those types of machines electrostatic yep. flocking uh, it's the same you know flocking technique that's used on train sets and a lot of other stuff so there used to not be as many people that flock um, as there were back in the 90s and such like that but more and more people are learning about it um, we use Ray Cairo with flock concepts and if you go to if you google flock concept Ray actually has uh, information online where it shows you how to build your own flocker and but uh, if you don't if you want to try it I mean it's great there's a lot of resources out there to help you with it but if not just give Ray a holler and here's a head that Ray actually flocked yeah that's one that Ray did for us right it's a great job he flocks all of our heads it's just a great job so and uh, and this one's had the eyebrows touched up and so you can uh, you know Gives, it gives you a little bit, uh, a few tips to, to clean the heads up as good as possible. Like I said, touching up the eyebrows makes a huge difference. Yeah, it just really pops it. Yeah, it does. And then most of the Joes are fairly clean if they've had uh, clothes on, so you don't have to worry too much about cleaning the body. It's typically the head, and it's a different kind of uh, material because it's hard plastic on the body, so, right. so not as much dirt and stuff got to those, but the heads have more of a rubber uh, feel to them, so they tend to pick up the dirt and hold the dirt a lot better. But you can have a lot of success with the soft scrub, go real easy. You can also just use liquid dish soap. That also works really good. Um, again, it's being gentle and using the contour brush right. so you can try to get into those areas without having to scrub really, really hard. So anyway, the next thing I wanna talk about a little bit is cleaning up some of the clothing. Cause like this guy's in the original clothes I got him from. And uh, you know, what I'll do is I'll take these off and generally if the clothes are, are, are pretty dirty like these, mm -hmm. I'll just drop them in some cool water with just some regular uh, just dish detergent or a light detergent like a Tide, a very mild Tide. And I'll just let those sit for a while and sort them around with my hand. Yeah, and you'll yeah. just see the dirt kind of come out of those. Now, there's a couple ways once you get them washed and you see the dirt come out, you rinse them out real good in cool, clean water till all the dirt comes out. There's a thing called a salad spinner. And I don't know if you're familiar with you may mm -hmm. have one. You can put your <laughs> you can put your GI Joe clothes in there. You can Just spin it around and it gets all the excess get all water the off like it does off of your salad lettuce. And it works great for Joe clothes. 
<laughs> so you can do that. Uh, or you can just lay them flat on a towel. A lot of times I like to lay mine flat on the towel while they're damp so I can get any of the creases or wrinkles out or anything mm -hmm. that's weird. And as they dry, you can kind of keep eye on them and kind of smooth them out. And, and they'll dry pretty nicely like that. You won't even have to iron them normally. They'll, they'll just dry out really good if you just keep watching them, kind of spreading them out. When it comes to ironing, a lot of people will iron their Joe clothes. Mm -hmm. A problem with ironing Joe clothes is a lot of people will take a huge regular iron, iron. and they'll put it directly on the clothes. When you do that, it leaves a really shiny look to your clothing. Um, and that's bad because you'll never get it out. You can't wash it out and it, and it just looks really weird. Um, so when I iron the clothing, I'll oftentimes put a washcloth mm -hmm. over the clothes and then iron over that. And that way you don't get that slick, shiny that sheen look, to it, yeah. that sheen that you get with a, with a big iron. Now, I typically don't like to use a big oh. iron because it's just it's just too unwieldy on clothes that are small like that. So I purchased one of these at the hobby shop and this is just a small little tiny iron that has like a little uh, spade tip on the end of it. And this is great for GI Joe clothes because you can get the collars, you can get in close. It really gives you the ability to really get into the areas. Right, to a little small. Right, huh. and it doesn't get too hot, so it's just the right amount of heat. Um, but it's perfect for doing those types of things. And they sell it just like that? Just like this. I highly recommend this. It's really huh. good. It doesn't have, it has temperature adjustment, low right. to high. And, uh, and then it has an on off switch. And, this thing is really handy for ironing these clothes. Almost looks like a solder in there. Yeah, and, and when they're more detailed, the more detailed the stitching is and the, the shape of the clothing, this is much, much better. Right. So that works really good. So after you've got the head washed, it's all dried. Typically these things have like 900 pounds of carpet or hair or whatever in them. These picked up a lot of hair. These are almost like, uh, they're hair magnets. They are. <laughs> and so, uh, the way to clean this is you can get you a tape roller like you used to clean your clothes or you can do it uh, the real easy way and you can just get you some duct tape or, or heavy tape and you can just go in and just pick up all the 1970s carpet fragments mm -hmm. out of the head. Dust, everything. Dust, they, these things pick up a lot of pet hair, a lot of uh, carpet fibers, everything. Yeah, because I mean, you have 40 years of buildup on that. Yes, yeah, and it really sticks to it. Um, and you can see, yeah, just right there, how much came off of just that jet right there. And it's there. crazy how much red. I've seen so many sets that you yes, get. Yes, lots There's of like red, red thread. But it does a really great job of getting all the, uh, the stuff out of the hair. You don't want to try to brush it with anything. This mm -hmm. is really the best way, because otherwise you'll damage the hair. Now, I know some of you guys probably been doing this for as long as I have, and these tips are not new, but for people who are new to the hobby or, or, or really haven't spent a lot of time uh, going out and, and getting Joes that are well loved and played with, oh, yeah. uh, these tips come in handy when you're trying to resurrect a Joe. My favorite part of collecting is finding a Joe like this that needs a lot of TLC and bringing it back to 100% looking brand new because that's one less Joe in the uh, Dump pile. Dump pile. Yeah. And and you've just you've you've rescued. I love rescuing the old toys. And so these tips really help to do that. Now I was talking about the soft scrub for the heads. It also works good for a lot of other stuff. Like here's a boot that came off one of these guys. And it's really bad. So you can take that soft scrub with that brush and clean it up and it'll clean up to a nice shiny boot like that. Gets into those grooves. Right. It also yeah, you can do that. So that really helps. Soft scrub is great for cleaning some of the plastic items as well. Yesterday I cleaned a marine hat that was almost black. <laughs> and just with some soft scrub, the rubber hat came perfectly white. Wow. So you can uh, do that. Now, speaking of whites, um, whites are a difficult thing because, you know, kids played with them and they got dirty. And you almost never find a white outfit that's actually white. Um, here's a couple of examples. They're kind of a little bit yellowed, a little bit white, a little bit dingy. Not really overly played with, but they're also not like they look like when they came from the factory. Right. So what I do with these, and this is the most successful thing I have found to use on these, are uh, denture cleaner tablets. Now, a lot of people don't recommend these, but they work great if you get the plain uh, denture tablets. Right. Uh, whether it's Effident or Polydent or whatever, don't get the ones that have the blue cleaning crystals. Don't get the ones that have any kind of a bleaching material in it. 
One right. thing you want to stay away from in doing these, and I and I remember in the old days, guys would clean these with bleach. Bleach, yeah. And the problem with bleach is in about four years, all the threads rot out of it. You and just, it just falls apart. Just I've literally it. seen sleeves fall off of jackets or out of outfits that people bleached. And they're like, what happened? Well, the bleach eventually eats through that old fabric and that old print. Right. So you want to avoid bleach. You want to avoid bleach and joke collecting as a... As a whole. Just a general rule, yeah. Yeah. And so uh, the Ephrodent tablets work great. Get you a, a bowl of water, drop the tablets in, drop the piece in, and it will whiten these things up really nicely without damaging them with any kind of bleach, oh, bleaching product. that's amazing how they clean up. Yeah, it's really good. But be sure you get the generic white tablets. You don't want to get anything that has any kind of a bleaching agent or, or anything or that additive. has the blue crystals or any of that. These are just polydent. They're uh, just the regular antibacterial denture cleaners. So they're really, really good. And, uh, and it'll really whiten these things up. I can't guarantee it'll get bright, 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 bright white, but it will probably take it three shades wider. Oh, yeah. We do that a lot on a lot of the white clothing here. So uh, it works great. You might have to do it a couple of times. And when you get done, be sure you rinse it really, really good. Yeah. No matter what you're doing, be sure you rinse everything out really good. Be it soft scrub, Tide whatever, you gotta really rinse the clothing out. Right, you wanna uh, get that out of the fabric. Yeah, yeah. you wanna be sure and do that. So that's a, that's a good tip for cleaning the whites. Now, you get a lot of outfits you find at garage sales or whatever that look like these. Um, you know, they're all crumpled up. Wrinkled. And some of them may have tears, but, uh, and you know, a lot of times you can go to shows and, and you can find these things and literally dealers will give them to you if they're torn or whatever. I get those because what I do is I'm a little G.I. Joe sewing kit here. That's a little sewing kit that I put together over the last 30 years. And what I have in here is a collection of buttons and snaps and clips and zippers and all the things that I've taken off old outfits. So when I get a shirt, say that's in really good shape, but it's missing all the buttons on the outside, I'll find the buttons that match and I'll sew those on. So, you know, again, no piece of clothing is worthless completely because the snaps and the buttons, and sometimes I'll even take out the tags. Right. Because a lot of times you'll get something that's missing a tag and then you can sew a tag. Sew the tag it. back onto yeah, it. Yeah, sew a tag back onto it. So if it's a junky piece, I'll take the buttons, the snaps and the tags, put those in my little sewing kit and, and keep up with those. Um, I also have my little helmet clips in here. Um, which Cotswold also sells some of these. I've collected them different colors over the years. And these are for the little clips that glue in the insides of the helmets Helmet. and the hats that, that have the straps. And those are often broken. So if you can pick those up, pick them up, put them in your little kit. I also have some uh, pins in here. You know, just, just different things that I utilize on the Joe clothing. And then also thread that matches these. I have a little collection of threads, some olive drab, some tan, so that when I sew up stuff on these, um, it, it matches. It, it's really funny when we, when we buy collections every so often we'll get these little pill bottles and they'll just be full of the buttons and the snaps yeah. and stuff like that because even as kids they were doing yeah 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 so it's really great to keep those so so don't throw those away a lot of people you know they go oh these are just trash all the strays away mm -hmm. well you're throwing away some good items that can be used later on especially if you're doing some joe restoration so anyway those, those are just a few tips after several years of collecting and cleaning and uh you know there, there are a lot more, but these are kind of some of the basics to get you started for that next garage sale or flea market find Joe you get. Yeah, and it's really cool because, like I said, David's David's been doing this for years, and he's just got literally like it's almost like a little toolbox that he has, and so it's it's really good to have a little bit of all of these different things, and including uh, he was talking about the magic eraser. Um, that's that thing's of just a just a priceless little tool, but you just have it all there. And so like when David comes and does repairs for us, he just brings us stuff. We have we have a kit um, that we keep as well. And so basically he sits down and he'll take the thing and it'll be the ugliest looking thing you ever saw. And then poof, you know. Um, so that's why he's down right here right now is we're getting ready for the Christmas season and we're gonna be debuting a bunch of uh, uh, restored sets that'll be coming out in our Christmas catalog, which will be coming out in November. I mean, sometimes it's as simple as just cutting off the threads. Yeah. Almost all of the outfits you find for G.I. Joe have loose threads hanging out. And so I have a little pair of little tweezer scissors I use and you go and you, you know, it takes like 10 minutes to go and cut all the st strings hanging out of the sleeves. Cause when they sewed these, they cut the strings very quickly and there's like all these loose strings. So sometimes it's just as simple as doing that. Just a few of those little tiny things can make it take a Joe from. Well, it's just that little iron thing that you had. I never yeah. knew that thing existed. Yeah. So this thing looks uglier than sin. And then you take that iron and just, oh man, it's just. Oh. Difficult to use a large iron on an item like that, but this iron, does a great job yeah, in there. Yeah, so that's you can get the sleeves and you know it's hard to use a big iron it's just too big so that's priceless that's you can get yeah. these almost at any hobby store or hobby lobby 
Michaels. Uh, some of them are in the sewing section, right? Um, because uh, uh, seamstresses and, and people use it for that too. So, so it's a it's a great tool. That's a valuable tool. The the, the iron, the Liquitex paints, the goo gone, goof off, soft scrub, and some generic poly uh, dent uh, denture cleaner, and, and, and a roll of duct tape or a, or a tape roller, and you're pretty much set to have everything you need to bring a Joe from from uh, overly played with to something that looks almost brand new. Brand so. new. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Cool. Man. Yeah. Well, folks, that's it for uh, this week's episode. Uh, make sure that you like, subscribe, and uh, ring that bell so that you get further notifications from us. Also, make sure in the comment section to uh, leave us any comments of uh, future videos that you'd like to see uh, from David, from Ace, from me, as far as uh, vintage collecting and tips and uh, tips, of, uh, tips of the trade and such like that. Um, and also just leave any comments of any future videos that you'd like to see just about toys in general, G.I. Joe and such like that. But until then, uh, go out there and get collecting.